Good morning, church. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. You see, and this is why I love you guys. This is why I love you guys. Would you kind to join the rest of the church, everyone else? Um, how are you guys doing this morning? Again? What? Thank you for representing. It is, it is a pleasure to... Um, just be bringing God's word with you this morning. Before we get into anything, I just wanted to welcome you guys to Move Up Sunday. And this Sunday is a Sunday where um, some kids get to promote into um, student ministry, but not just those kids. Other kids have promoted to a new grade. So can we acknowledge those kids for a second, please? Make some noise for our promotees. My iPad has been giving me trouble all morning like it, it just slides all right um this morning is a, a, an amazing morning and I believe that God has in store for you something and it's very simple um it, it is not a theological crash course it's something that you can take right now and you can go home and it can apply to your life this morning I want to start off by telling you or asking you this question. And you may have heard this statement before. You may have heard this question before. But act like it's brand new, okay? All right, student ministry, act like it's brand new, all right? All right. Um, church, do you know God has a plan for your life? Everybody take a big gasp. <gasps> there we go, there we go, there we go. You see, you see, you see? Church, do you know... On the count of three, well, not when I ask the question. Um, church, do you know God has a plan for your life? There we go. Look at your neighbor and say, God has a plan for your life. Look at your other neighbor and say, God has a plan for your life. And you see, what's so funny about this statement is, although... We know that God has a plan for our life. Sometimes in our lives, it feels like we are waiting forever for him to fulfill his plan. Amen. Sometimes in our life, it seems like it takes forever for him to provide answers on decisions for us to move forward. But just because it takes forever or it seems like it's taking long does not mean God does not have a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life, church. See, I remember growing up, and as I was growing up, my mom would go to work, she would leave the house, and me and my siblings would have to feed ourselves, we had to make sure we had food, so there was always freezer foods, and every day we would go into the freezer, and we would go in to see what it has, right? And I grew up on three kind of freezer foods, okay? I grew up on pizza rolls. Anybody grew up on pizza rolls? Pizza rolls? Anybody grew up on Hot Pockets? Hot Pockets? Anybody? You see, I see some hands. Anybody grew up on Jimmy Dean's breakfast sandwiches? There we go. I see a hand in the back. I see, see, see. I grew up on these type of, types of foods. And as I was growing up, we would take the food out of the wrapper. We would put it, put it on a plastic plate. And we would put it on a plastic plate and then we would put it in the microwave for the perfect timing that the, the, the box tells us to cook, to, to cook it on. And you see, as we would place it in the microwave, we'll put it on its right time. But how many of us know when we place something in the microwave, we could get a little bit impatient? Anybody get a little impatient when you put something in the microwave? You see, this is called being hangry. Anybody get hangry? I get hangry, all right? And you see, we would put these things in the microwave and we would wait for it to get done. And in the moment of being hangry, what I could be doing in the meanwhile is preparing myself. I can be preparing myself for the food that's coming out of the microwave because I don't know about you, but it takes a lot for me to be ready to eat. You see, First of all, I'm using a plastic plate, and I don't know about you. I use plastic plates because, number one, I don't want to wash dishes. Number two, because, listen, anytime you put a plastic plate inside of the microwave, you know what it comes out looking like? Like a folded lawn chair, okay? So I can be preparing my second plate in the meanwhile. 
The next thing I could be preparing is a cup of juice. If you drink anything but juice with food, you are insane. If you drink water with uh, food, that is not good, all right? Your water starts to take taste like your food. You need juice to wash down the food that you just ate. All right. And then the next thing that I need to be prepared to eat is TV. OK, if you don't need TV to eat, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you need to start today because it's going to change your whole life. And if you don't believe me, you can ask my wife. She's sitting right here. I'm telling you right now, I need all these things to eat. All right. And it's not until I'm done preparing those things would I even take my first bite. All right. But when I was growing up, as when I should have been doing those things, what I tend to do in the waiting is I tend to stare into the soul of the microwave. I look at the food going around and around and around and around to the point where I am dizzy and I am looking into the microwave. My palms are sweating. My mouth is watering. I'm starting to drool. My stomach is turning inside out. And the microwave hits 30 seconds. The microwave hits 30 seconds. And at this point, 30 seconds turns into 25 seconds. 25 turns into 20. 20 turns into 15. And at this point, when it hits 15 seconds, everything in my life freezes. Everything in this world ceases to exist at this point. Why? Because I have an important decision to make. I am either going to take the food out prematurely or I'm going to let the timer hit zero. I never let the timer hit zero when I heat up food. There is times when my wife would come into the kitchen and she would tell me to clear off the microwave because something that was cooking for two minutes and 30 seconds still had a minute and 15 seconds left on the microwave. I don't let the microwave hit zero. How many of us never let the microwave hit zero? Anybody in here? Anybody in here? I see some points from the Scots. Listen, I never, I never let the microwave hit zero. And you see, most of the times when I take the food out of the microwave prematurely, what tends to happen is I am still not prepared for what is coming out of the microwave. What tends to happen is I still have to get myself prepared. And as I'm done getting myself prepared, I will take a bite out of my food. And at this point, I would realize that the food is still cold. The food is cold, number one, because I didn't let it finish. And number two, it took so long for me to prepare myself before I took my first bite. And what ends up happening is I have to put it back in the microwave and it takes even longer for this food to get finished. I have to put it back in a microwave and it would have been probably better for me to just wait until the food was finished cooking in its perfect time. You see, sometimes in our lives, church, we find ourselves in a season that we are waiting for God to do something in our lives. We find ourselves waiting for breakthrough. We find ourselves waiting for some answers. And what tends to happen is we start to take things in our own hands. We get impatient. And just like we do with the microwave, we try to rush God's process. Some of us may find ourselves in a waiting season this morning and we've been waiting for God to provide answers. And the moment that he does, we are caught off guard because we didn't prepare ourselves while we wait. Church, just as the food would need more time in the microwave to be fully prepared for you, just like I should have been fully prepared for what was coming out of the microwave, Sometimes in our lives, our situations, our environments, ourselves, we need more time in God's hands to be fully prepared for what he has in store for us. Sometimes we need to stay in the waiting. Sometimes, church, we need to stay in the season of our lives in the waiting. See, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 puts it like this. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, wait on the Lord. Look at your other neighbor and say, wait on the Lord. You see right here in verse 31, the word wait in Hebrew means kava. Everybody say with me, kava. You see, kava, the definition of kava means hopeful expectation. You see, this type of waiting that Isaiah is talking about is not a despairing waiting. It's not an anxious filled waiting. It's a waiting that is filled with hope and it's filled with the confidence or the assurance in God's plan and his perfect timing. You see, church, I want to encourage you today very simply. God has a plan for your life and his plan will unfold in his perfect timing. And you see, this hopeful expectation that we see here, the word kava, this is what faith is. Faith is the assurance of things that we hope for even when we don't see it. And in our lives, faith, it takes faith to understand that we won't always see the fruition of God's plans right away. It takes faith to understand that God is consistent. It takes faith to understand that God is timely. It takes faith to understand that he operates in perfection. So my question today isn't what are you waiting for? My question today is, what are you doing while you wait? What are you doing while you wait? What are you doing while you wait? What are you doing in the waiting to prepare yourself for what God has in store for you? How are you letting God finish his work inside of you in the waiting? How are you letting God fulfill his perfect plan in his perfect timing in the waiting season? Because church, there's always going to be a season in your life when you are waiting for something. There's always going to be a season in your life that you are waiting for the test results. There's always going to be a season in your life that you are waiting for the acceptance of your kid into that college that you always wanted them to go to. There's always going to be a waiting season in your life when you are waiting for God to fulfill the promises that he has in store for your life. And you might not find yourself in a waiting season this morning. You may not find yourself in a season when you are waiting for God to do something in your life. But that very reason is why I'm preaching this message today. Because I want to equip you for that season because it's coming. The waiting season is a season that you cannot escape from. There is always going to be a moment in time when you are praying to God and you are going to ask him for, to do something in your life and it may not happen on your time. So what are you doing while you wait? And you see, what gets us through the waiting season is this one truth. And if you don't take anything away from today's sermon, this is the one thing I need you to take away. The first thing that you need to understand, in the waiting, God is working. In the waiting, God is working. Can you look at your neighbor and tell him God is working? God is working. You see, when you find yourself in a season when you are waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled... Don't lose faith in God's promises. Don't lose faith in God because he is working behind the scenes. I want to take you to the story of Lazarus in chapter 11 of, um, of John. John chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. There we go. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. 
When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Someone say two more days. You see, in this moment, we see that Jesus is told that his dearly beloved friend Lazarus is sick. We see that Jesus is told that his dearly beloved friend Lazarus is seriously ill. And the method of madness that Jesus had in this moment was to stay where he was for two more days. He stayed in the city that he was or the village that he was for two more days. And now right here, you can probably understand that the disciples were probably confused. The disciples were probably frustrated. They were probably feeling things that they've never seen and felt before. And in the waiting, they, have, they probably were doubting God's plan. And here's why. You see, up to this point, Jesus had already performed so many miracles in the disciples' lives. Up to this point, Jesus had already performed so many miracles before the disciples' eyes. Up to this point, Jesus already had taught so many sermons that the disciples already understood that he was the Son of God. They already believed that he was the Son of God. So when Jesus had the chance to go heal his friend and he stayed put, the waiting season, the delay may have been so frustrating and may have been so confusing. But I want to tell you something today that will benefit you. In the waiting season, you don't have to try to understand God's plan for your life. In the waiting season, you don't have to try to make the puzzle fit with the right pieces because God has a plan for your life and in the waiting, he is working. You see, Jesus said to the disciples, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so God's son may be glorified through it. You don't have to try to understand what God is doing in your life in the waiting season because whatever he's doing in your life is going to bring him glory. At the end of it all, whatever God has in store for you, it's not only to prosper you, it's not only to give you hope, it's not only to give you a future, but it's to bring him glory. In the waiting, God is working. So we fast forward a few days and Jesus is preparing to make the journey up to Bethany and he tries to tell his disciples that Lazarus is already sleeping and when he gets there, he will be sleeping. But they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. So in verse 14, it says, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. In this moment, Jesus knew and understood that in the waiting, they won't understand what he was doing. He understood that they wouldn't understand the plans that God had in store for them. But it would produce something far greater in their lives if they just waited. Can I tell you something, church? When you wait and you are in the season of waiting, God is going to produce something far better and far greater than you can in your own strength. God's plan and his timing is perfect. So they arrived to Bethany. And when they arrived to Bethany, Martha comes up to Jesus and she's sorrowful. She drops to her knees and she tells Jesus, if you had just been here, my brother Lazarus would not be dead. We go to verse 38 and it says, Jesus once deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing there, that they may believe that you sent me. 
When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out and his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. You see, at this point of time when Lazarus came walking out of the tomb, they may have not understood before what Jesus was doing. But as soon as Lazarus walked out of that tomb, every single person standing there around Jesus now saw the reason of why he awaited. It was because the whole time Jesus had a plan to bring himself glory. The whole time Jesus had a plan to bring his father in heaven glory. And in sometimes in our lives, of, in a season of waiting, it might seem confusing. It might seem unconventional. It might not seem according to your plan, but God is working on your, your behalf and he's going to bring himself glory. See, in the waiting season, he's working and verse 45 proves this because it says, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and I and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. All the Jews who was there saw the miracle and they placed their faith in Jesus because they saw what he did. If Jesus had came and just healed Lazarus, maybe some of those Jews don't believe in what he, he was saying to them. Maybe their whole faith would have been misconstrued if he didn't do this. And he knew in this point of time, if I heal him, and if I bring him back from the dead instead of healing him, it will bring my father in glory, father in heaven glory, more than it would if I heal him. So what I want to tell you today, church, is today is a sign for you to be waiting in, anticip in anticipation and in expectation. Don't get frustrated when you have to wait. Don't get frustrated with God when God tells you, no, not just yet. Because God is working while you wait. And the outcome is far greater than you can ever imagine. You see, the waiting season produces miracles. You want to see the work of God in your life? You want to see breakthrough in your life? You want to see things start to change in your life? Allow God to work while you wait. Allow God to do what he wants to do before you jump into a season of your life that you're unprepared for. You see, because God is preparing you in the waiting. God is preparing you in the waiting. When you feel like God is taking long to answer your prayers, he's not only preparing something for you, he is preparing you for your next season. See, I believe that there are three things that God does in our lives in the waiting. In the waiting season, God develops patience and character. In the waiting season, God builds our faith. In the waiting season, God prepares us for his plans. And you see, in our lives, we cannot step into what God has in store for us without faith. We can't step into what God has for us without faith in his work. That word kavah, the hopeful expectation, that type of faith, it takes that type of faith to stay in the waiting. It takes faith to believe in God's plan and his timing for your life. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 puts it like this, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You see, kavah, that hopeful expectation, the assurance, the confidence that God is going to do something in your life is what gets you through the waiting season. And it's because your preparation for the next season happens while you wait. Your preparation for the next season happens while you wait. 
James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 puts it like this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete nothing, not lacking anything. And you see, what I love about this, this verse in, in James or this passage in James is I, I believe it's a direct correlation or a remembrance of David's life. Anybody know David's story? David, King David, David, David. All right, let me, let me give you a crash course. You see, David was anointed king. David was anointed king at 15 years old. From 15 years old to 30 years old, it took 15 years until he was appointed king of Judah. You see, and the problem here is that David was not anointed king of Judah. David was anointed king of all of Israel. So from 15 years old to 30 years old, and then seven years and six months later, he was appointed king of Israel. Now, I don't know if you're following me today. I don't know if you're counting with me, but it took 22 years from, from the time that David was anointed to the time that David was appointed king. It took 22 years in the waiting that David actually saw the fruition of God's plan. And can you imagine how much faith David had to have? Can you imagine God coming to you and telling you he's about to do something in your life? He's going to make you king and then makes you wait for 22 years. And the things that David went through wasn't easy. David in the waiting was attacked by Saul multiple times. David in the waiting had to fight Goliath. David in the waiting served in the field and brought his brother's lunch daily. David in the waiting season went through so much and he was almost killed multiple times before he was king. And the very important thing about David's waiting season is this waiting season served a purpose. You see, in the waiting, God was preparing David for what he had in store for him. In the waiting, David had to go through all these trials to get prepared to what God was calling him for. You see, David served while waiting to be king. David learned forgiveness while waiting to be king. David learned how to have courage in God's plan and faith in God while waiting to be king. David learned how to show mercy while waiting to be king. David, through the waiting season, was prepared to step into a season that God had already promised him. And I believe that God has promised you good plans for your life. I believe that God has a plan for each and every individual in here. And sometimes you may find yourself in the waiting, but the waiting is what will prepare you for your next season that God has in store for you. In the waiting, God will prepare you for your next season. So church, what I want to tell you today is do not neglect the waiting season. Do not neglect the waiting season. Because in the waiting season, your faith in God's plan, in the waiting season, your faith in God's timing, in the waiting season, your faith in God will be tested. And that's exactly what God wants. God wants to test your faith in him in the waiting season. But why? It's because he wants to produce a finished work inside of you. He wants to prepare you for what's next. God will use the waiting season to prepare you for what he has in store for your life. And while he's preparing you, he's preparing what's next. Point number three this morning is God is preparing your next season in the waiting. God is preparing your next season in the waiting. You see, there are times in our life that we jump into another season of our lives without being fully prepared, but we also could jump into a next season of our lives without the next season being fully prepared for us. I want you to think about this for a second. You tell your family, you're moving. 
you're going to go buy a house. You buy the house. And one day you have the bright idea to go to the construction site. You go to the house, but by the time you go to the construction site, you've already picked out all the paint colors. You've already picked out all the decor. You've already bought furniture. You've already bought everything you needed for the house. But when you show up to the house, there's no doors. There's no windows. There's no roof. And if you moved in now, your whole life would be a disaster. And here's the reason why. The house, how, how it is right now, yes, it has a foundation, but there's no way for it to provide shelter. There's no way for it to provide comfort. And there's no way for it to provide security. And much like this house would need more time for you to occupy it, sometimes in the waiting, God is preparing the next season for you to occupy it. Because if you step into a season of your life prematurely, there will be no security from God. There may be no comfort from God. There be, may be no shelter from God because as you stepped into a season prematurely that wasn't a part of God's plan or timing, you have started to stray away from his plan and his timing. When you step into a season of your life unexpectedly or unprepared, you have now strayed away from God's timing and his plan. And it could be anything. It could be a new business deal. It could be a new business plan that you jumped into. And you're wondering here today, why didn't it work out for me? Could it be that God wasn't ready for you to jump into that new business venture? You're sitting here today and you just went through a breakup and you're hoping for this new relationship and you're wondering why it didn't work out. Could it be that God wasn't ready to place you in a relationship? Could it be that the environment or the person in the relationship wasn't prepared to be in that relationship? Sometimes we complain and we, we, we weep about the, the, the job promotion that we didn't get. We weep about the job that we didn't get. And sometimes it's because God has better in store for you. Sometimes it could be that God has something better planned for your life. And if you would just wait to see the fulfillment of his plan, you would see that there are moments in your life that you are waiting. And before you step into those seasons, God needs to prepare those environments. He needs to prepare those situations and he needs to prepare those people for you. And the reason is because Sometimes it's not that you aren't ready for the season. It's because the next season isn't ready for you. Sometimes it's not that you aren't ready for the next season. Sometimes the next season isn't ready for you. And God is trying to tell you today to trust in his timing. You are not here on coincidence you are not here on a mistake. God has a message for you, and it's to trust in his timing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 tells us, God makes everything happen at the right time. Amen? Yet, none of us can ever fully understand all he has done. And he puts questions in our minds about the past and the future. Today, what I wanted to tell you, church... Trust in his providence. Trust that his plans are good. Trust that he has the best plan for your life. And I don't know who needs to hear this today, but church, he's already working on your next season before you arrive to the next destination. He's already working on what's next for you. Let's think, let's take, a, take a little trip back, back in time to the story of Adam. You see, Adam was created by God. And Adam was created by God on the sixth day, amen? Amen. Uh, and God created the heavens and the earth before Adam. And you see, I always found it ironic that God created the heaven and earth before Adam for this very reason. 
is because God didn't create man before its environment. He created the environment before man. Then, after he created the heaven and earth, after he created the garden and he planted trees, then he told Adam to go tend to the garden. He gave Adam instructions after the, um, the garden was already created. He gave Adam instructions after it was created and ready for him to step into. You see, Adam's environment was already prepared for him to be in there or for God to place him in there before Adam was created. So when he placed him in there and he gave him the command, Adam was able to fulfill the purpose that God was calling him to. You see, God is preparing your next season for you to step into. And in your life, you've been wondering why you have not stepped into a new season yet. In your life, you've been wondering when the change of scenery is coming. You've been wondering why God hasn't given you a change of scenery. And it's because a lot of times in our life, God is preparing the next season before he placed us in there. You see... God wants to prepare you for your next season, but also God wants to prepare your next season for you. And a lot of times in our life when we aren't fully prepared to jump into the next season or the next season isn't fully prepared for us, a waiting season can become a wasted season. A waiting season can become a wasted season when you aren't ready to jump into that next season that God is calling you because you were unprepared. Or a waiting season can become a wasted season when you jump into a season that God did not call you to. Point number four today is don't allow a waiting season to become a wasted season. Church, while you are in your waiting season... What are you doing while you wait? How are you letting God prepare you in the waiting? See, I remember a couple months ago, Julie and I, we were looking for a new church. We were looking for a new job, and we were in Philly, and it had been a couple months of waiting. And I remember that We had just moved from Wisconsin. We went to Philly, and it had been a couple months of us just constantly putting our faith or placing our faith in the promises that we knew that God had in store for us. And you see, in this couple months of waiting, while we were waiting, we were preparing for every job interview. We were preparing for every connection. We were preparing for every conversation. We were preparing for every travel plan, every flight. And at this point of time, before we moved, Julia was six months pregnant, going on seven months pregnant. And she's traveling around the world with me. And at this point, sometimes the plan could get a little bit confusing. Sometimes at this point, the plan got a little bit unconventional. At this point of time, sometimes things were getting scary and I was losing hope in God's plan for our lives. You see... But we knew that God was calling us out of one season and into the other season. We knew that God has something in store for our lives. And we did not know what it was, but we knew that it was going to come to pass. So we were in this season in our lives and there was times that we would have hard conversations. And I would have to tell my wife that I didn't know what God was going to do. And I don't know what we're going to do. And there would be other times where I would come into a room and I would be praying to God and I would be crying out in desperation because I was scared to death. I didn't know where my family was going to go. I didn't know what my baby girl was going to eat. I didn't know what we were going to do. And we were going to job interviews around the world. And I started to think that I was going to veer away from God's plan for my life. But in the waiting season, we started to pray. In the waiting season, we fasted. In the waiting season, we went to church. In the waiting season, we went to, we worship. And as the doors were closing, and I started to look for other jobs in different fields, God was working in the waiting. You see, I had a man named Ryan call me on January 13th. And he was like, listen, 
Trey, I got this job in North Parkersburg, West Virginia. And I'm a guy from Florida. Florida is big. And let me tell you, I never even heard about Parkersburg, West Virginia, let alone West Virginia. So when he called me and he told me about this job, I'm in Pennsylvania. And he's like, it, it really seems like a good fit. So I hear him out. We, we schedule another interview. Happens on January 16th. My first interview with Pastor John was January 23rd. And then by February 9th, we were visiting West Virginia. And I can remember going through all the processes. I can remember going through all the conversations. I can remember praying in our hotel room every night, praying on our way to interviews, praying in every single conversation. And in the waiting, God was preparing me for what he was calling me to. You see, by February 13, I was stepping into something that God had called me to, something that God was preparing me for. And the waiting season did not become a wasted season. Church, what I'm telling you this story for today, it's not for a feel-good memory. It's not for a feel-good encouragement. It's to tell you that God's plan is perfect and his plan for your life will come to pass. Do not allow... Go ahead, friend. Do not allow a waiting season to become a wasted season. You see, just when I thought all the doors were closing, just when I thought all doors were shutting, every opportunity was being closed off, just when I thought I was going to take a, part, take a job apart from God's plan, God was working in the waiting, and he placed me somewhere today that far greater than I could ever imagine. He placed me somewhere today far greater than I could ever do on my own, in my own strength. Church, my waiting season did not become a wasted season. And I'm telling you that the same God that did something great in my life can do it in your life. This is not me just talking to you. This is not me just reliving memories. This is me telling you God has a plan for your life and what he wants to do in your life has a process. And there's going to be some times where you're going to have to stay in the waiting. I'd like to invite the worship team back up, please. You see... The worship team is about to sing a song called Good Plans. And I believe that God has good plans for you. God has a plan for your life. And in the waiting, he wants to do something in your life. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. My last point for you this morning. In the waiting season, the waiting season is a season of renewing strength. The waiting season is a season of renewing strength. See, I believe there's five things that God wants to do to renew your strength in the waiting. And you might find yourself frustrated today. You might find yourself confused. You might find yourself giving up. You may find yourself without hope. But what I'm telling you today, in the waiting, God wants to renew your strength. And here are the five ways that he's going to do so. Number one, in the waiting... You need to worship continuously. Number two, in the waiting, you need to read God's word, God's word continuously. In the waiting, you need to serve continuously. In the waiting, you need to attend church continuously. In the waiting, you need to pray continuously. See, I don't have any scriptures right now for these five points, but can I tell you something? If you look up this thing on the lowercase g, Google, if you look these things up, you would find scriptures to back all of these points up. 
These are biblical principles for your life. You want your strength to be renewed. You want your faith to be renewed in God. Do these five things and let me know how, they, how it's going. God wants to renew your strength in the waiting. So church, what are you doing while you wait? What are you doing while you wait? God has a plan in your life. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan for your life and it's not just to give you hope. It's not just to give you a future. It's not just to prosper you. It's to prepare you for what's next, for you to have faith in Him, to trust in His Word, and lean not on your own understanding. Take courage, David says, and wait on the Lord. Just want to pray for you guys. We're going to go into this song. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can trust in your plan and we can, we can lean not on the things that we understand and the things that we see, but we can walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Lord, your timing is perfect. Your plan is perfect. You have good plans for each and every one of these individuals. So, Lord, we ask you, not even that, Lord. You say that your word will not come back void, Lord. So we're believing, Lord, that we would see your plan come into fruition in our lives. We, were, we are believing for the things that you've already promised us. You have already set it before us, Lord. Lord, we ask you right now that the person that came in today with no hope would have the assurance that you are a faithful God. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen.